Dear children, today I am going to explain you chapter 9 of your book Honey Dew. That is The Great Stone Face Part 1. The Great Stone Face, it revolves around the old prophecy that persists in a valley which has the great stone face beaming over it. The old prophecy says that one day a man will come bearing likeness of the great stone face and he will be the noblest and greatest of his time. One day a mother tells her son earnest about the prophecy and since then he eagerly awaits the arrival of the man. The story focuses on how the inhabitants of the village misjudge two men to be the one spoken about in the prophecy and how even after waiting for so long, Ernest is still hopeful that the man will come. Okay, so let's begin the chapter. One fine afternoon at sunset, a mother and her little son sat outside their cottage as they discussed the great stone face. It was so big that it only required them to lift their eyes to be able to see it. Although it was miles away, it could still be seen clearly as the sunshine falling on it enhances all its features. If you may ask, what really was the great stone face? The great stone face was a piece of art made by nature on the perpendicular side of a mountain by the natural piling up of some huge rocks. You can see the great stone face in this picture, isn't it? The rocks were piled in a way that when looked at from a particular distance, it seemed like a human face. But if the onlookers were to look at it from too close, they would lose the outline of the great face and would only see a pile of giant rocks. Surely, when looked at from miles away, as the clouds gathered around it, the great stone face looked alive. Many people believed that the fertility of the valley is also because the kind and gentle face was constantly smiling over it. A mother and her little son, as was mentioned in the story earlier, sat outside their cottage staring at the great stone face and talking about it. The son's name was Ernest. As the great stone face smiled over him, Ernest described his desire to his mother to hear the great stone face talk. He thought that a man with such a kind appearance must have a very pleasant voice. He further expressed if he would ever find a man that looked like the great stone face, he would love him dearly. His mother replies and tells him that if an old prophecy were to come true, there may be a day where a man will come who will look exactly as the great stone face. Upon hearing this, Ernest questioned his mother about the old prophecy. Upon being asked, Ernest's mother told him the narrative that her mother had told her when she was even younger than little Ernest. It states that at some point in the future, there would come a day when a child born near the place would exactly look like the great stone face upon becoming an adult. He would be destined to become the greatest and most selfless man of his time. Majority of the population's faith still lied in the prophecy while others considered it irrelevant. Whichever may be the case, the great man being talked about in the prophecy had not appeared till that time. Upon hearing this, Ernest clapped his hands above his head since he was filled with hope. He told his mother that he wished to live long enough to see the nobleman. Being a loving and thoughtful woman, his mother did not wish to discourage him. 
even though his hopes were a bit unrealistic. Thus, she replied, perhaps you may. Since that day, Ernest always remembered the story his mother told him and would always think about it whenever he looked at the great stone face. During his childhood, he stayed in the log cottage where he was born. He was responsible and loyal to his mother. He would help her in doing a lot of things with his little hands and loving heart. He was very obedient yet thoughtful as a child. As he grew up to be low key and quiet in his youth. Ernest never had a teacher. So the great stone face acted as one in his life. Each day after winding up his work, he would stare at the great stone face for hours until he began to think that those immense features recognized him and smiled at him kindly and this encouraged him. Around that time, a word was spread across the valley that the great man from the old prophecy that bore resemblance to the great stone face was about to make his appearance. Quite a few years earlier, a young man born in the valley had settled a distant seaport to become an established shopkeeper. His name was Gather Gold and he had very good business skills. By that time, Gather Gold had become so rich that if he began counting his wealth, it would have taken him a hundred years to do so. At that time, he thought of coming back to the valley as he wanted to spend his last days where he was born. Upon hearing this, Ernest was extremely moved at the idea of seeing the greatest and noblest man from the prophecy in his native valley. One day, when Ernest was staring at the mountain, imagining that the great stone face looked back at him, he heard the noise of wheels as people announced the arrival of the great Gather Gold. The noise of wheels was made by the carriage in which Gather Gold arrived, the carriage being drawn by four horses and it was stopped with force around the turn of the road. One could partly see the face of an old man with a yellowish skin tone from the open window. The people started shouting in excitement that the man exactly resembled the great stone face and that the old prophecy was indeed true now that they have the great man in the valley. Ernest was able to, uh, not able to understand how people actually believed that the man resembled the great stone face like it was said in the prophecy. He got disappointed and turned away from the wrinkled, clever and unpleasant face of the old man. He stared at the valley where he could imagine the great stone face asking him to have patience as the man in the prophecy will come. A few years passed by. Ernest grew up to be a young man. He was not very famous amongst the people living in the valley. He lived a very simple life and the people of the valley found nothing extraordinary which was worthy of their attention in his lifestyle. Only one thing drew their attention towards him that after finishing the day's work he would still stare at the great stone face. People thought it to be his foolishness but also considered it to be excusable because Ernest was diligent, hardworking, kind and also a good neighbor. The people were unaware that the great stone face acted as a teacher in his life. They did not know that the sentiment which was expressed in it would expand Ernest's heart and fill it with emotions like sympathy deeper than others' hearts. The wisdom that he acquired from it was better
from what any book could teach and the people of the valley were unaware of it even ernest himself did not know that the thoughts which came to him so naturally in the fields and at the fireside were much more complex and superior than what others like him had a simple and uncomplicated soul as he continued to be like he was when his mother first told him about the old prophecy he still retained his extremely pure and good looking face that looked down at the valley trying to reason why it is taking so long for the human embodiment of the great stone face to come by that time mr gather gold who was considered to be the man in the old prophecy died and was buried before he died he lost all his wealth which was considered to be the main essence of his existence as all of his gold melted away the people of the valley came to the realization that there was actually no resemblance between the ruined merchant and the magnificent beauty of the great stone face then came the news that one of the previous inhabitants of the valley became a soldier many years ago after a lot of struggle and fighting he rose to the rank of a commander who was quite famous in fact on the battlefield he was known by the name of blood and thunder as he grew old he desired to return to his native valley the inhabitants his old neighbors and their grown up children began the preparations to greet the acclaimed commander a word also spread across the valley that the great likeness which was spoken of in the prophecy had appeared the valley grew excited again and even those who had never even thought of looking at the great stone face before began spending of hours looking at it just to anticipate how general blood and thunder actually looked like on the day of general blood and thunder arrival everyone including ernest left their work early to gather at the place where a feast had been prepared to welcome the general to greet him soldiers were made to stand on guard flags were waved and the crowd shouted in excitement ernest stood far away and could not see the general himself but he surely could hear several voices one man claimed that the general had the exact same face as he danced in joy another said it for a fact that he looked wonderfully like the great stone face a voice could be heard saying that he is undoubtedly the man from the prophecy as he is the greatest man of all ages by that moment ernest managed to glance at the general's face in a way that he could also see the great stone face beside him Ernest could not find any resemblance between the two like the crowd announced but at the same time he could hear his heart tell him not to worry as if it was the great stone face itself telling him that the man will come so this was the first part of the great stone face